what's up everybody uh, i know it looks a little different um obviously the chair to my right is empty um my my lovely wife had a prior engagement but we had a uh, we have a guest on tonight who we were really excited about and wanted to get on so unfortunately jessica is gonna have to miss out so her fault not ours but um not going to do the hi, hello, hey, because I'm not going to be able to do it justice, but I'm going to get straight into the bio because I wanted to get this this introduction right. Like when you have certain people come on, people of certain esteem, people of certain distinction, you want to make sure you get the bio right. So uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. J. Justin Hairston founded, serves as the chief executive officer and lead consultant of J. Justin Hairston Consulting LLC, which offers consulting and HR to small and mid-sized companies, professional development, and college readiness. Dr. Hairston has served in the federal government in many HR executive capacities. Dr. Hairston holds a master's and doctor of philosophy degree in higher education administration and a concentration in teaching in higher education. Aside from human resources, Dr. Hairston has a great interest in research and higher education. Specifically, he is interested in closing the gap in research for black men uh, completion and higher education. So without further ado, Dr. Harrison, Harrison, sorry, I don't know why I had the extra T in there. Um, <laughs> welcome, my brother. How are you doing today? Oh my goodness, I'm well. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be on this platform. Rushed vibes. Like, I, you know, every time I hear the song, the intro, I feel like I got the single melody part. <laughs> you know, the, the intro is probably most people's favorite aspect of the, of the podcast, which I don't know how to feel about uh, because it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a dope, like, uh, tune like it's it's very catchy. Um, it's something that like every time it comes on, our girls get up get up and they start dancing like no matter what they're doing. But <laughs> I'm hopeful that people don't just listen to like the first 13 seconds and once the song is over, like they stop listening or stop watching on YouTube. Like I hope they actually watch the content. But no, yeah, it's uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. I mean, I know you're uh, one of our more I won't say avid listeners because I know you've admitted sometimes that you have to catch up, which, you know, I'm not going to hold it against you, but I know you're one of our supporters who have been here from the beginning. So, uh, it's definitely an honor uh, and a privilege to have you on. It's just unfortunate that we're only, uh, I'm, I'm flying so low tonight, but, uh, I again. know sis, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> we got one more chance, opportunity. Hopefully it happens. <laughs> yeah, so I have everything running, right? Like I have her stuff set up just in case she wants to come uh -huh. flying in here at the eleventh hour and hop in. Um, <laughs> okay. Probably won't happen because it's it's already late enough. Uh, I don't want to keep you up too late, but um, just in <laughs> case she she wants to come flying in here, uh, I got I got everything set up. So all she has to do is sit down and and put her headphones on. So, That's why uh, you're the man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I appreciate it, but uh, as you saw. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a guest, so I'm not used to setting up for like a Zoom or a Google Meets or anything like that. So I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I forgot the memory cards. The girls didn't want to go to sleep tonight, of course, because I needed them asleep by a certain time. Had it been any uh -huh. other night, they would have been asleep by 8, 830. But of course, you know, they wanted to wild out tonight. Um, hey, it's Friday. It's Friday. It, it is Friday. And it's and it's the last uh I guess the last true day of summer break for Salas. She starts summer camp on Monday. So okay. she, yeah. uh, she wanted to hang out too. I'm like, no, daddy's got to do the podcast. So I need you to I need you to go to bed. So she, she only agreed to go to bed if I promised to, if we promised to bring her on again, so she could have her, her second, uh, showing on, on rush vibe. So I had, uh -oh. I had, I had to negotiate with the terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <Finally> contract. <laughs> yeah but enough about uh my crazy night preparing for for this interview how, how have you been how you doing in this late stage pandemic or whatever we're in now right that's an interesting question a good question um i'm doing good i'm happy to say that um the pandemic 
of course, has had its challenges, um, as you know, uh, from babbling the actual virus to uh, working, and uh, life just didn't stop for me. So um, continuing to work and going in the office every day throughout the pandemic, and then the, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh the nature of the job that I do, that's just like uh, a little bit, that was crazy, still is crazy right now, yeah. but hey, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, and, but what I was going to say is, uh, to answer your question, um, through the pandemic, it definitely allowed me to get in tune with myself. Um, and uh, take some things off the back burner, uh, do a lot of reflection, um, and definitely rely on my village, my brother, David, and be like, yo, what you think about this? And uh, actually, the consulting business, I do have to say that you were one of the first people who told me to start a consulting business. And I was like, uh, no, nah, I don't think so. That's not for me. <laughs> so uh, thank you for that. And um, I'm looking forward to having uh, a great turnout and be very successful with this endeavor. Yeah. And I definitely want to get into the, uh, to the consulting and its inception in your mind um, and how it's, how it's going. I don't know if you've actually, I think you have started, you told me you, you've started uh, operating in that, in that space and, and kind of what your vision is for it. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I guess I owed you some, uh, some support and motivation because you were, uh, equally uh, as important for me in getting my, well, starting and finishing my master's degree. So, uh, I, you know, you've you've kind of been down that that path before, uh, and you were someone who I spoke to when I was considering it, and then actually when I when I dove in, um, I think you may have actually known that I did it before before Jess did. So, uh, breaking news here, Uh-oh. breaking news here on on Rush Vibes. I'm sure I'll, I'll have to pay for that one later, but. Um, just being an accountability partner and then having been through it before, uh, it, it obviously gave your guidance, your advice a lot more weight because I'm like, all right, well, I'm sitting here complaining, but I'm talking to somebody who's actually already been through it um, mm-hmm. and, and knows how to get through it, knows the the peaks and the valleys, what they're like. So uh, if it weren't for you, you know, I probably, I, I probably would have finished my master's, but I probably wouldn't have finished in, in 18 months or 16. I can't remember. I think it was 16 months uh, like yeah. like I did. And, um, you know, it just, it just speaks to the fact that you really do need to have people around to hold you accountable, not always to, to butter you up and love you up and tell you what you want to hear, but also tell you what you, what you need to hear. Um, and, and also know how to, how to tighten up the, uh, button up the message with a little bit of encouragement and and love. So uh, I appreciate you. Thank you for helping me, uh, get through that. Um, I know when we initially talked, I was supposed to then proceed and get my, uh, (laughs) <laughs> try to get my doctorate, which I'm, I'm, I've cooled on a little bit as of late. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't, I don't think that that's in the cards for me, at least not for, uh, until the girls get a little older, but, um, yeah, thank Guess you. What? It's got to be there. It's not going nowhere. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if my motivation will be there though, but we'll, uh, we'll see. But yeah, I'm glad I was able to, to help, um, with the, uh, the, the consulting firm. But, um, before, before we jump into that though, uh, because this is our, our official, unofficial Juneteenth episode. Um, part of the part of the episode is going to be comprised of this interview here with you, you and myself, and then uh, Jess and I will will have a segment as well. But um, of course, on Juneteenth, we want to celebrate Black excellence, which is why we have you on uh, and and highlighting yes. highlighting the, the consulting firm. But I do just want to give allow you the space to kind of give people a little bit more background. Um, some of our vibe tribe they're familiar with you because you know we run in in similar circles or some of the same circles at least from from college but uh mm-hmm. for those who don't know you i uh, just kind of want to give you a chance to kind of give maybe like some background where you went to school and what you thought you were going to do versus how you ended up where you are now 
Oh, wow. Uh, let's see where do I start. And thank you for that compliment of Black excellence. And especially in honor of Juneteenth. Um, definitely uh, standing on the shoulders of our ancestors, of our loved ones, of our uh, friends, and we definitely have the shoulders that we're going to have our younger generations uh, stand on as well. So um, that's one thing that I keep in mind is that, you know, whatever I do in everything that I do, um, it's not just for me, James, but it's for uh other people is for everyone else. It's uh, the gift that keeps on giving, whether it's research, whether it's uh, consulting with human resources, whether it's mentoring. Um, yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So uh, I went to undergrad at Greensboro College. Uh, in um, It's a small four-year private I think it's a liberal arts school. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is, okay, in yeah. Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, and, of course, that's where me and you cross paths. <clears throat> yep. And uh, they see so many memories there. But uh, as I was reflecting, um, the most meaningful memories that I have besides making uh, wonderful friends, and being blessed and honored to come out of college with such great people um, was having the experiences to give back to uh, the community of Greensboro, North Carolina through the Village 401 program. I had a mentor um, who definitely at the time uh, encouraged me to become um, involved in the community. And I, uh, at that time, well, let me backtrack. When I first graduated high school, I thought I was going to be a radiologist. Um, and that didn't work out, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so um, I just went into school, really at the last minute decided to attend Greensboro College because one of my best friends uh, who went to high school with me uh, decided to go to Greensboro College. And I was mm -hmm. like, what? Really? So let me go and give it a look chance or whatever. I went with the intent, honestly, of transferring um, uh -huh. the following year to a, for, to a, a state-funded institution, a public institution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and really, I thought... I was going to transfer to a HBCU. Right. But one, one, um, one that probably happened to be down the street from Greensboro College or, or another one? No, it was another one. Um, I was really looking at becoming an Eagle um, oh, okay. and going to Durham, North Carolina, because I heard a lot about there and my cousins graduated from there. And I was like, you know, Bull City. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I feel sorry. I, I know I'm going to hear a lot of flap from people from Durham when they hear me say that. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I really um, uh, thought I was going to transfer, but it was something about that small, unique uh, learning experience and that community that we had and um, being able to make those lifelong friendships. Uh, so, David, you're not going nowhere. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so then after I left, uh, at Greensboro College, um, well, first, I did have the opportunity to serve as the, uh, class president, um, which was big, yeah. and then, um, I was, uh, selected or elected to become the SGA, um, vice president and then I went back to the class president at our, my senior year mm -hmm. and so uh, that was very interesting because you know I got to dibble and dabble in politics right. <laughs> school politics yeah. um, and at that point I said I would never go into politics because 
uh, I just, that was not for me. And so um, I have a master's in uh, higher education administration. I got that at the same time uh, as working at Lewisburg College, which is a residential junior college. Um, And uh, that's where I really honed into mentoring. And I fell in love with Uh, student affairs and academic affairs and higher education. And that's where my passion for ensuring that uh, our black and brown students succeeded. Um, At that institution, I don't know if I can say that, but at that institution, (laughs) it was where um, I really got to get involved and immersed in diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, on multiple levels because uh, I felt like the administration at the time was not embracing diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so it was my job to ensure that the students had a platform to use their voice. Mm -hmm. Um, And then after that, I started working for a a federal agency. um, Oh, before that, Gifford County Schools. So, you know, show a little love to the babies. I worked uh, with the elementary school kids for a couple of years and then transferred or I went over to work for a federal agency. Um, and most of my time there has been training uh, and uh, I did like workforce management mm-hmm. and learning everything about human resources, which yeah. uh, led me to start in a consulting firm. But um, in a nutshell, because, you know, I can go on and on, and I don't want to bore your audience because, y'all, this is my first time on a um, podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say, you have to say that. I mean, you're doing, you're doing great. I mean, you're just... <laughs> So it's pretty, I, I find, I okay. find it that it's pretty easy for people to talk about themselves. So that's, you know, it's, it's one way to kind of loosen someone up when you have them on a podcast. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. well, okay. In that case, I'll keep going, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, um, let's see. So yeah, training, um, doing human resources from, uh, the beginning to end for the whole life cycle and uh, of human resources and recently going into, uh, the role of being a survivor benefit specialist Mm -hmm. has been very tough during the pandemic. Um, I entered that role, um, like right before the world shut down. And so for some people who don't know, um, that role consists of me um, talking to families. Like I'm one of the first, it's first of all, four of us for over 300,000 employees, 400,000 employees in growing. And so every time um, an employee becomes deceased, we have to reach out to the family. We have to um, do everything from offering condolences to sometimes um, being a counselor to um, just making sure that the business affairs are taken care of. So um, that right there was in the middle of the pandemic was like, wow. Yeah. Um, the workload was crazy. Um, not having enough time off. So, uh, basically, um, and I was doing my dissertation at the same time. So, Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot, it was a lot during the pandemic, but to be a survivor and to have survived the virus at the, I think it was the beginning stage of when it started coming out, um, Mm -hmm or taking over yeah. America, it felt like. Um, that was just a lot. And it really made me focus on the importance as well of uh, mental health. Um, I shared with you some struggles and some victories that I've had. Yeah, for sure. And then, um, so, you know, 
at the end of the day, um, you know, we have to be there for each other. We have to be a good listener um, and we have to be attentive. So, um, but yeah, so I think that's all I'm going to talk about as far as my education (laughs) um, uh, and my work experience. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, no, I I appreciate that. I appreciate you kind of giving the the 411 on your on your, uh, your, your educational background. Um, what was, what was it like going back a little bit? Uh, cause I'm always curious of, uh, how other, um, black students felt, um, at undergrad, the undergrad school that we went to. Um, how did you feel? Uh, did you feel like you got everything? Um, or did you feel that you got, enough out of your campus experience being a black student at a, at a PWI, um, a school that uh, was liberal arts, so to speak, but didn't really know how to, uh, maybe not cater to, but how to be inclusive of uh, the uh, the students who didn't make up uh, the majority in terms of race. How, what, what was, the, what was the, the experience like for you there? Wow, and that's a great question. So as I reflect back to my experience um, or experiences at Greensboro College, one that really comes to mind that uh, sort of kind of lit the flame for me as far as my research passion, which I'll get into later on about Mm -hmm. um, anti-racism, was... I recall the, I think it was the Methodist Association had came on campus and they were, they pulled like maybe seven of us who were selected to talk to them in regards to, or in regards, yeah, in regards to the campus Mm -hmm. environment. I was the only black person in, um, I recall sitting there and uh, and this was a big deal because it affected if the Methodist uh, Association was going to continue to fund the college. Um, So we got to diversity as a topic and um, I said, yeah, it's diverse, but I feel like it's not the college doesn't embrace me as a black person Mm -hmm. and one person at the time who I considered to be a friend um, was like, well, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I feel like we do a great job um, embracing black people. Mm -hmm. Um, We do diversity day and we do different activities and I was like, uh, taken aback and I was like, no. So first of all, diversity day is not geared towards, uh, black people. Right. Um, it's geared towards other ethnicities. And if you think that, um, even a piece of food that represents the culture and looking at, uh, like a, a a an artifact or something mm-hmm. like that. It's all that you need, like one walk through to make your black students feel embraced on campus and you're right. a friend. I was like, I'm your friend and you're telling me that my experience pretty much didn't matter. Um because you felt that right. y'all there was enough uh activities. Um, right. on campus. So uh, that lit a flame within my research because as a black male, I wanted to ensure that um, other black men had a platform to share their voices and talk about uh, their exper- experiences of mm-hmm. attending um, PWIs and of course, our research is anonymous, so that was a good thing um, because I wanted to ensure that uh, you know no one was linked to an institution. Right. 
so whatever they said would be could be provided um, in in transferability. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to change anything. Just put it out there what they said. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, my experience was it was okay. Mm -hmm. That um, situation really made me upset. Um, and to this day, I'm <laughs> cordial with the person. I don't ever see them. I probably won't ever have to see them. And right. if they're listening to this podcast, I want you to know that you was wrong. <laughs> and I want you to learn that diversity, equity, and inclusion goes far beyond that. And so while I'm on that kick, one thing that I always tell everyone is diversity happens regardless because we're all different. Right. No one person is the same. Uh, inclusion is something that we have to work at. So uh, just because you uh, feel that um, something is working, you really need to talk to those voices of those marginalized groups and ensure that, you know, you are meeting their needs. That's important. Right. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, so my experience was okay. You know, at, sometimes I felt like I was, I had to speak for all black people. And I really made sure that um, people understood that I was not about to do that. Uh, yeah. I would say, hmm, survey the other folk. Or uh, we have organizations on campus, such as the United African American. Um, society or we have uh, UAAS or we have different groups on campus talk to them and then um, I saw a different side of things when I was on the student government association side and saw how funding was not equally dispersed to organizations um, such as uh, like UAAS versus other organizations. And um, it will always be something like, oh, well, the participation um, wasn't that big and right. just some type of excuse. And so while I was in the role of um, president or vice president, I felt like it was, um, I, didn't feel like I had to, like I owed the organizations anything, but I did feel like I had to give them the opportunity, the platform to at least uh, voice their opinion and challenge budgets to get more money for better quality programs and more programs. Um, as a person uh, of well, personally, one thing that did affect me was not seeing uh, more faculty and staff members that looked like me. Um, and that's important. As I right. conducted research and as I, I have grown and worked in higher education, um, it's so important to see people of color um, in a faculty role or in the in administrative role, and um, trying to see how I can carefully say that, but that's my challenge to institutions of higher education, and my challenge to all organizations are to make sure that you have a diverse um, leadership that reflects your population, because it one builds self-efficacy amongst everyone. So if they see someone excelling and succeeding, then they should want to succeed. Yeah. So what about you, your experience? Um, wow. Uh, well, well, first, uh, the last point you made, I just want to say and double down on it. Um, last episode, I had a shirt on. Not last episode, episode before last. I had Sherlyn said representation matters and everything you just said. I mean, absolutely. Um, uh, it, it echoes that because, you know, like you said, if we, if we, if we're to see ourselves in, 
um, in positions of distinction, you know, uh, faculty positions, professors and um, presidents and, and whatever all those other positions are. See, I don't, I don't even know where they are because I'm not used to seeing us in them. So um, I, I think, you know, it, it can help aspire and light fires under, um, you know, the generations coming up, coming up behind us uh, by, by seeing people who look like them in uh, important positions. So uh, definitely uh, agree with you on that. My experience in college, um, you know, it was, it was all right. You know, I, growing up, uh, I came from um, really like an upper middle class uh, family. So a lot of the spaces I found myself in were decently diverse, but and you go to school and and thing and you get into clubs and things like that. It's majority white, so I had mm-hmm. been accustomed to being in predominantly white spaces. So it wasn't as if it was something different. Uh, now I was an athlete, so I played on the football team. So obviously that's where most of the black people <laughs> who, went to, who went to the school that's where that's why they were there is because they're on the football team. So uh, you know when you're a collegiate athlete you know, D1, D2, D3, whatever, majority of your time, if you're not, aside from your studies, is going to be spent with your team. You're there at practice, you're, you're at games, or you're, you're, you're lifting. Or because that's those are the people who you're with all the time, you know, those are the people who you tend to gravitate toward when you do, you know, extracurricular stuff. So, you know, it... Um, I noticed that there weren't a whole... There, the, the, the body of black students was, was very small. Um, but it, it didn't feel any different than any other space I'd, I'd really been in, to be honest with you. Cause those were a lot of the schools I went to, uh, in Virginia before I moved down to North Carolina. Um, and then when I moved down to North Carolina, I moved to rural North Carolina. So again, very small black population. Uh, mm-hmm. so it was really, it was par for the course for me. Um, and you know, I, I don't know that I, uh, I guess I don't, I didn't, because it's what I was used to. I didn't know that there could have been more, I guess, for what I could have gotten in terms of, of a black student and, uh, that there was a HBCU down, down the road that maybe I could have applied to and could have gotten a totally different experience. Right. But I didn't know that because that's not, that's not what I was used to. Um, that's not a lot of the spaces I found myself in growing up. Um, but I did, I will say that because the black, uh, student population was, was so small, it made it easier to make friends like you, you and I, and then there are some other, uh, some other people I befriended who weren't, who weren't athletes. Um, Mm -hmm. because you tend to kind of gravitate toward people who look like you, who can, can share experiences, who, you're almost certain is also feeling uncomfortable when they're the, the fly in the ointment or the, you know, the, the token in the, in the classroom or who's used to being that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was all right, but it, it definitely looking back on it, I think the, the school could have, could have done more. And for all I know, maybe now they're doing better. I don't know. I don't, I don't really keep up with the, with the college, but, um, yeah, it was, it was all right, I guess. <laughs> But it, I, I, I guess it could have been more. But um, like I said, it was, it was just kind of what I was used to, to be honest. And the last part that you were talking about as far as making those relationships, um, and I encourage everyone who get a chance to go download my dissertation, you can just look up my name and just type me in the recount. Um, I talked a bit about fictive kin, which is basically when um, students, well, basically when you deem people to become family who are not family by blood. So that was extremely um, important. And I realized that that was, well, the research, the data showed strongly that um, that is one of the contributors to success mm-hmm. for black men at PWIs. Um, so yeah, definitely. Uh, when you said that, that was like, a- uh, but yeah, I mean, since we're talking about your dissertation, what, um, what was the, the, the process like for you? 
obviously I know, but for the people who are, who are watching or listening, uh, what was it like for you from, from start to finish and what kind of toll did it take on your mental health, uh, pursuing, yeah, pursuing, a a doctorate? Wow. Um, <laughs> I don't want to open up any old wounds or anything. So if we need, if you need to pass on this one, let me know. We can move on to another question. But um, <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, it's good. So the beginning portion of it was very interesting because uh, I actually was completing research on a totally different topic. Um, and then, of course, you know, research dissertation. You try excuse me, you're finding the gap in research and you're trying to um, close that gap with the research that you conduct. Um, so a lot of research, a lot of reading articles, um, a lot of learning how to synthesize was um, definitely a part of the process. Mm-hmm. Um I've read over 150 articles to definitely uh, get my literature review on point. Um, Because, and then the main thing was for me that was shocking and sad at the same time was that most of the literature pointed to how uh, higher education is the most diverse place college campuses are the most diverse places in America, yet um, it doesn't embrace everyone. Mm. And so, uh, for instance, when you talked about being an athlete, one of the things that uh, as a researcher and an educator that popped up in my head was, hmm, um, what are PWIs doing to sustain their black athletes? Because uh, if we are bringing them in, and I'm, I'm just speaking as if I am a PWI, if we're bringing black students in and they are making our uh, school look good and growing our finances, yet they do not come and complete a degree, shouldn't we be held accountable or think that we should uh, some way, although even if, you know, it's a D1 school when someone gets drafted, shouldn't we still try and encourage them to complete their degree? Mm. Um, but you're an athlete. You would probably have more of a, a say <laughs> in that space than I could, but um, that's, that's one of the challenges that I want to research and delve into uh, as far as student athletes, black student athletes who um, completed their programs and see, you know, what were the contributors that helped them complete their degrees at PWIs versus, and then look at those, um, the I don't like to focus on, like, the deficit, so I don't like to focus on uh, why didn't you complete the degree. But I think it's important to understand what are some of the factors that uh, cause individuals to not complete their degree. So I think that's something important. Mm -hmm. But anyways, going back to the dissertation phase, it was very, it was like when I finished, I slept for... (laughs) Ever, yeah. um, my family thought I was depressed, yeah. <laughs> and I was not depressed. I just mentally needed a break. And when I talked to uh, doctoral students that I mentor, and I talked to uh, doctor- doctoral students um, who seek me out to be a coach, I tell them once you get to the end part of your dissertation. Yeah, be prepared to do nothing but sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was draining, but it was worth it. Um, again, because, and like I told someone else, how dare you complete the research and provide a platform to individuals who does not have a voice already, and then. Um, 
you silenced them. That's not right. So right. I knew that I had to follow through with it, regardless of as soon as I completed data collection, um, I tested positive and for uh, COVID and um, that right there was like something I had another struggle I had to get through. Um, and then uh, I don't really think I talked to you about it or most people, but like even the long term effects of COVID is yeah. it's real. Um, it exists, and um, you know it. While well, having it during the doctoral phase, during my dissertation phase, definitely affected me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't imagine what that would have been like trying to finish a, a doctorate while also battling a new a new strain of a virus or whatever or a, or a new virus uh, that really don't have any. I guess at the time didn't really have any sort of treatment for it. Just right, you know. <laughs> yeah, pray, at prayer, the time, and, was... prayer and holy oil. Um, yeah, yeah that that would have been that would have been crazy uh, for. Well, I'm sure it was crazy, but yeah, I, I can't imagine having to go through that. Um, it was, but having you know good people in my life, such as yourself, who checked in on me multiple times throughout the day, and others. <laughs> Um, thank you for that. I appreciated that. So, and my parents did a phenomenal job <laughs> taking care of me um, and get me to and from uh, doctor's appointments, etc. So, yeah. uh, my village came through. <clears throat> well, it's good. It's good to. Uh, it's good to have one. It's good to have a community of people who can, who can look out for you. Um, did but what have, I'm learning, oh, sorry, go no, ahead. No, no, go, keep going. I was going to say, but what I'm learning is that it's okay um, to cut off friendships, um, which is uh, something that I had battled with for a while. It's okay to take breaks. It's mm -hmm. okay to sometimes have that time apart because yeah. – um, you know, sometimes you do have to be by yourself when you're in a good space. Yeah. I feel like a preacher. I need to say that again. You can take time and be by yourself, but do it when you are in a good mental and emotional state. Right. Because, um, you know, you don't want to cut everybody off and then be depressed and be like, well, I don't got nobody to talk to. Well, you the problem. You cut them off. So um, I had to do a lot of searching. And like I said, the pandemic really helped me uh, grasp and understand uh, what is fair for me in relationships, in friendships, Um and what's not and move forward so yeah. sorry i just threw that in there but i wanted to share that because i have the platform too yeah no i mean i i agree um because you know we talk a lot about or i talk a lot about and i know i know you do as well uh mental health um and a large part of that is knowing when certain uh relationships are actually unhealthy uh and are, are kind of have the reverse effect uh, and actually pull from you rather than, you know, pour into you. So, uh, you know, I, I've definitely learned that uh, here recently in the last couple of years and the pandemic has kind of, I think, expedited a lot of those relationships that would have, have fallen by the wayside anyway. Um, you know, when you can't, you know, see people or you can't visit people or people hesitant to have other people who, who don't live with them around, um, right. it kind of speeds speeds that up a little bit so <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i mean it it's it's a hard thing i think to come to to realize and come to terms with but once you've you've accepted it and you understand uh the importance of it uh i think it's it's a really freeing um mentality and mindset to have um it's, it can give you a lot of peace uh, instead of holding on to to like dead weight so to speak in terms of you know, relationships, I kind of need to, you kind of need to separate yourself from. 
So I get it. So please right. keep, keep dropping nuggets. It's good, <laughs> good, good, good stuff. Yeah. I mean, if I feel like the whole, the, the, I could focus on negative things, but I will say that they were, um, the turning points for growing and development within myself. Um, one of my brothers always pick on me and talks about how I'm so book smart, but when it comes down to like real life situations or being street smart, I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I can say uh, I felt like on some situations there was some validity there. And so um, during the pandemic, I have really like taken time and especially after I finished my uh, dissertation, you know, because I want to be the best part. I know we, it sounds so cliche, but Mm -hmm. I do want to be the best person that I can be, whether it's, in my professional life, my personal life. Um, So um, taking those steps and reflecting a lot and then not just reflecting, but saying, okay, I see that this could change. What steps could I change gradually? Or if it needs to be done expeditiously, Mm -hmm. um, do that. And then, you know, I have a relationship with God and, um, I pray and, you know, um, one of my sincere prayers that I've seen come through is that if um, something is not meant to be, then go ahead and shut that door or cut it off quickly. Yeah. Um, and when I see that happen, except for I feel like in a dating world, i almost relapse with that (laughs) because uh, I don't want to say it's been boring, but um, I will say that I have tolerated some things that I have, I would never have tolerated before. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm seeing that and recognizing that and I'm like, okay, I got to get myself back together. Like, no, this is what? I dealt with that or I will put up with that boy. Bye. Like I got to get it together. (laughs) So, um, recognizing things like that was, is, is important. Um, in having that reflection and, uh, to all of your, uh, listeners who are a part of the LGBTQIA plus community and or an ally, I want to say thank you. Um, and uh, definitely be meaningful with your approaches and with your uh, platform. What does it mean to be meaningful when you when you say that? Um, because I think uh, you know we we kind of see it right, like June first. You see all the all the companies, they changed their logos on social media. And, and Kamala Harris, I think even said like, you know, members of the LGBTQ plus community, we see you, we hear you, we're with you. But it seems those seem more performative, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and rather empty. So when you say meaningful, um, what do you, what do you, what do you really mean by that? Like what's, <laughs> How, 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 what, what would a meaningful, um, out, what would meaningful action by say an ally, uh, what would that look like to you? That's a good question. Um, and by an ally being meaningful is being intentional by not just supporting someone, uh, of the, community one month of the year, um, having strong communication throughout the, uh, every day or throughout the year, uh, being intentional. Um, so 
it goes beyond the flag. It goes beyond uh, June first, like you said. All mm-hmm. the companies starting to uh, put up their flags and send out emails mm-hmm. and. Uh, pictures of uh, same-sex families. It goes beyond that. Um, Being meaningful is uh, speaking up against hate crimes, um, speaking up for the voiceless um, in time of need. Um, And then, so that's it as far as the allies. So just, you know, being meaningful with an intentional with um, supporting the community. Um, There is a message that I do, or, you know, it's Black Excellence, since this is uh, the same (laughs) Juneteenth we're here. Um, So I think it's important to also address um, that there is still racism um, and racial discrimination within the LGBTQIA community. Mm. Um, There is still classism um, within the community, but really I want to focus on racial discrimination Mm. and encourage uh, the allies to check in on their uh, black and brown brothers and sisters and friends um, And when I say black and brown, I'm talking about marginalized groups by ethnicity and see if uh, they're okay and see what they need. Because uh, racial discrimination is such a huge issue that is not spoken about Mm -hmm. um, within the gay community. And one thing that I hope that uh, organizations as a whole get away from is that because they say um, when they hire somebody for diversity, just because they say that they're a member of the LGBT plus community, that doesn't mean that they are totally diverse and inclusive. So um, again, going back to being meaningful, being intentional, um, being a supportive network, to uh, members of the LGBT plus community, um, that's important. And then um, for the black uh, members, I think it's important to note that, you know, it's okay to be black and it's okay to identify as one of the LGBT plus members. Um, Because we are, in June, and then we have Juneteenth. We have that intersectionality right there. Right. And um, how does that look? Is what I always wonder. Mm. Um, not just for myself, but for others. Yeah. So, <laughs> how do they navigate that? Because uh, some people in the Black community in the past have. Uh, thought that especially black men they let down the black community because they are LG because they're gay or they mm-hmm. like the same things however some people don't like labels so right but um I just want to encourage everyone that you know that's not true so uh if you are a black uh lesbian or gay male or person who like the same sex um you are still black excellence if you are um, contributing to the community and being intentional about your works and your works as in supporting, researching, communicating, um, giving the message of uh, the importance of uh, safe sex practices um, all of that. So, and I said I wasn't going to go off on a tangent on that previously, but you did. Uh, apparently, <laughs> the diversity, equity, and inclusion within me yeah. <laughs> and the educator and the administrator had to come out um, and the True. consultant and discuss that. Well, no, it's good stuff, man. I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you did. I, I think it all it all applies, right? 
So it's, uh, mm-hmm. and it is a message that needs to be heard. Uh, and then the message that we definitely want to give a platform, be or be a platform for uh, here at Rush Fires. I know Jessica whole, would wholeheartedly agree. So um, thank you for, yes. uh, thank you for sharing that. So I got about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, and I've, we've talked about everything except your consulting uh, <laughs> business. So I, I want to give you the last 10 minutes to uh, talk a little bit about, um, I think you've talked about your inspiration for it. Uh, but mm-hmm. maybe if, if you feel like there's more detail there to go into it, but just talk about uh, what it's been like starting it up, uh, what you're doing now in the early stages and, and kind of where you want to see it grow to. Definitely. Those are some good questions. Um, and I'm sorry, I felt like I sound like I'm at work in an interview, <laughs> but um, let's see. So it's definitely important to, as far as, um, my business, J. Justin Harrison Consulting, to let everyone know that uh, everything that I do, I'm going to do an excellence always and always. So um, that's a quote that I love, always and always, because, uh, you know, um, some people have heartedly uh, does or uh, offer quality within their business. So the consulting firm will focus um, on many uh, areas, and I'm excited about it because they're near and dear to my heart, um, personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. So uh, the human resources aspect of it is uh, basically offering um, human resources services to individuals and in small to mid-sized companies um, that do not have a human resources officer or right. a human resources office um, or they don't have that uh, chief of human resources role because they cannot afford it. So um, afford it or they just haven't filled that position. So I want to offer my services as a consultant to step in that uh, role, that position, and um, pretty much, you know, offer the services from everything from onboarding to offboarding to professional development. Uh, I was about to say, like Shirley Caesar said, you name it, (laughs) I got it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> because and also because of my uh, experience within human resources, my uh, career speaks for itself. Okay. Um, I am like a high quality servant for human resources. Um, so that's the main aspect of it. Then we have uh, professional development or career readiness, as I like to call it, um, where uh, individuals who want to focus on um, improving themselves and entering or revamping their themselves uh, and entering the workforce. Um, so I will offer, you know, resume writing. I'll offer interview uh, tips, um, whatever is needed uh, to get that person to their next level. Mm. Um, and so uh, those are just a few of the services. And then um, college preparedness. I am so excited about that. So while I'm currently working for the government and I teach part-time at uh, universities and research as well, um, college preparedness is extremely important because there is a gap um, in between uh, completing high school and enrolling into uh, school. So I wanted to assist individuals who want to enroll in undergraduate programs as well as graduate programs because uh, some people can find the task of completing an essay for a graduate program very daunting um, or getting no feathers of recommendations together. Come and check me out. I'll gladly assist you with that. And then the last portion of that will be um, 
dressing with success. So um, Mm -hmm. I believe that it's important to have a uh, wardrobe that will support you. And my brother is about to come in uh, right (laughs) quick. So... (laughs) And so it's important to um, <laughs> <laughs> it's important to uh, dress for success. We hear that often, but it's very important. And some people do not know how to dress for success. So, right. uh, for instance, when you see me on Instagram, you can see me in a suit. In a suit, will have like. Uh, a lapel flower and all this stuff, a pocket square. Um, just some people be like, oh, with pants and stuff like that. But you won't see me in that same attire in a business meeting. Right. Um, and it's a, a certain reason because you have to have that appearance that people will take you serious. Um, so... Those are the services real quick. I try to keep it under 10 minutes. Um, definitely uh, everything is, I'm still at the beginning stage of planning. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a logo and everything I'm excited to share soon. Uh, let's see. And I started the Instagram page, which is going to be um, JJ. Oh, hold on. Where are we at? I'm pulling my phone out so I can look at it. Give me one moment. Uh, Yeah, it's jjh.consulting. So, and I'll get that to you. Uh, And then um, I have the website that's coming. I think I might hold off on the website until I have a launch party. So I'll keep you updated about that. Um, But if anyone has any need, definitely reach out to me. and I'll send you the information if you want to upload it or, or whatnot. But uh, for them, my personal Instagram is uh, Dr. Dot Elite, E L I T E underscore. And uh, just send me a message and I'll gladly assist um, with any of those aspects. Okay, cool. Because I was, I was going to ask, you know, how can, if you want to be found, uh, how can people? reach you online but you went ahead and uh and gave all that information oh, up. so it's no see, it's, it's perfect that's that was, my first time no that was going to be my next question so i don't <laughs> i don't need to ask it now because you already gave it so um well cool uh I'm, I'm about a time um i'm i'm low on space with my my memory card so i don't want to lose any uh any good content so uh, i think we'll go ahead and wrap here so uh dr harrison uh, we appreciate you uh, coming on and, and joining uh, joining the pod. Uh, I think it was uh, it was really good, really good stuff. Um, I think people are going to enjoy it, and definitely uh, a lot of nuggets in there that that people need to hear, and I think can can help them uh, in their own lives. So uh, you're welcome back anytime. Uh, considering oh, that you essentially invited yourself on anyway, so. <laughs> uh, but I'm I'm not mad. I'm not mad. It's it's it was. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. So uh, uh, it was it was a pleasure having you on. Um, next time you come back, we'll make sure Justice here that she clears her calendar and she can she can be here. Um, and yes. yeah, keep, definitely keep us posted on how how the launch is going and, and how the business is. Uh, uh, going come coming along as you as you get it up and running. I uh, would definitely uh, wish you well with that. So uh, thank you very much, good sir. And uh, thank you. We will uh, we will catch up with you soon. All right. All right. Thank you and thank you all for listening in to me. Yeah. All right. None but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now Can't stop me now